You... You're a few days late. Girls' Nation was just here. I have seen... You know that. <laughs> well, welcome to the White House. And a special greeting to Harry Walters, administrator of the Veterans Administration, and to Commander Krull, to the director of Boys' Nation, Marty Justice, and to a man who, down through the years, has become something of a Boys' Nation institution, Casey Kaysen. I understand that on some mornings, he gives everyone a Boys' Nation a wake-up call on his trombone. Well, I think that anybody that can wake a hundred young fellas up with a trombone and lives to tell about it <laughs> has my deepest respect. But I know that each one of you went through a long selection service or process uh, to come to Boys' Nation. And I think just like your families and friends, I'm mighty proud of you too, as I know they must be. I'm just going to say a couple of more words because well, somebody suggested more, and I know we only have a few minutes here, and we're going to have a picture taken and all. I've just thought that rather than me trying to say something more to you about things that you probably already know about, that maybe just one or two individuals, uh, or maybe all of you thought, but if I could just take one or two questions that you might have. Yes, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, well, thank you. You make me very proud, but that wasn't a question, so. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to know, uh, what is your number one commitment as president of this nation? Number one commitment. Sometimes it seems so complicated, and there are so many things on the plate that you don't know whether you could pick one out or not. But I think that anyone that has custody of this institution, you know, you don't become president. You have temporary custody of an institution called the presidency. And I think that anyone that has that has to be dedicated to whether it involves world peace and outside aggression or whether it in involves internal problems, is to preserve what I think is the most unique governmental system that has ever existed among mankind. And that is one that remembers that the goal of America is the ultimate in individual freedom consistent with an orderly society. And to preserve that and to not get tempted as we have over the years too often into seeking services or benefits from government that actually come at the expense of giving up some of that freedom. And I try to judge everything that comes before me uh, in that regard. You know, there's a lot of talk of left or right. There actually is no left or right. If you follow the left and you follow the right, you eventually come around to a full circle where you find that you have come to totalitarianism, rule over the people by government, whether it's by the way of Hitler and Nazism or by the way of communism and a, and a Stalin. And so, again, it comes down to ours is an up or down, up to individual freedom, or if we choose the wrong path, going down through statism and the welfare state and so forth, and winding up at that same totalitarianism. Now, yeah. Mr. President, I watched the Democratic Convention, and I thought they kind of ripped you apart. And I was wondering how, how you reacted politically and emotionally to this. Well, I really only watched the last night with the acceptance speeches. I did, however, have reports of some, like uh, Governor Cuomo's speech and all. And very frankly, I had to say that most of the charges, if not all, that they made were not based on any facts whatsoever. Uh, they could be just... <laughs> There was a lot of political demagoguery, and I guess that goes with an election year. But that's your responsibility, and what you're learning here is know the facts. You know, it's true that all of us can express our opinion all we want, 
but we have a responsibility that goes with that to know the truth and know the facts. All right, and then I know I've got to quit so we can get that picture here. Uh, well, I have to think that a historic choice was made. I don't think it should be surprising to any of us if we look at recent history, and I'm kind of proud in our own administration that we've been able to appoint the first woman to the United States Supreme Court. Uh, we have nearly 2,000 in high places in government that have been appointed out of those that I can appoint uh, as, as president in administrative positions. And for the first time in history, we have three women as members of the cabinet. And uh, so I think it had to, had to come at some time or other. I could not have been in the one to make that decision this time because I think that I am blessed with the best vice president that this country's probably ever had. <laughs> All right, that's, that's got to be, the, this has got to be the last one. Okay. Uh, if you're reelected four more years, what are your plans uh, for your foreign policy? Right? Foreign policy? Right. Well, <clears throat> we've made contrary to what's been said the last few days in that meeting in San Francisco. I think we've made some great gains in foreign policy. I think the NATO alliance is more firmly together than it's ever been. Uh, what we have done in Asia, which I think is the wave of the future, our Asian neighbors. We are a Pacific nation as well as having our alliances with Europe. We're on the rim of that great Pacific basin. And the old thing about move west, uh, still holds. Moving west is, is a great idea. I think there's a great potential. I think our relations there, the recent trips that we've made uh, right now with Japan, our alliance, is, or our friendship with them is tighter than it has ever been. Prime Minister Nakasone has been a, a, a great leader there. The People's Republic of China, and without at any time giving up our loyalty to our friends on Taiwan, which they know we will not do. That, we intend to remain and keep that friendship with them. And uh, uh, Secretary Schultz has just come back from Southeast Asia, Indonesia, countries like that, meeting with them. So that we'll continue that. But my desire is, and right now we're stymied by the recalcitrances of the, of the Soviet Union, but we have to sit down with the Soviet Union and persuade them that the road to go is not just a limitation on the growth in nuclear weapons, but an outright reduction of those weapons. <laughs> and it's my dream that if we can start down that road, then that they too will see the common sense in going all the way back to the proposal that was made when we were the only ones that had those weapons, right after World War II. We made a proposal to totally eliminate them throughout the world. And I would like to think if we can start down the road of reduction of that kind of weapon, then we can go all the way and persuade them to eliminate them entirely. <laughs> well, well, thank you. Mr. President, on behalf of uh, Boys Nation, uh, they passed a resolution by their Senate yesterday commending you uh, for your job and wishing you well uh, in the future. I'd like to present that to you. And on behalf of Boys Nation, uh, a badge of uh, their uh, uh, group and organization and also uh, one of their t-shirts uh, that uh, I know that uh, will fit you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I might say on behalf of the American Legion, I want to thank you for accepting our invitation to address our convention at Salt Lake City. Well, thank you all, and God bless you all, and now I think I'm supposed to go over there Just in the middle. Just stand right here, Mr. President, they'll move around. Boys, okay, let's go. Oh. We'll move you at the last oh. point. Oh. <laughs> paying for those uh, miseries that are libation.